On today's episode, we're going to be working on putting our 600 Yamaha two-stroke engine into our Tearjet build. Now, if you're just new to the channel, this is your first episode. This is a Tearjet 80, 70, still don't know. If you want to check out the other videos, we put full long arm suspension on this thing and we will be putting, like I say, a 600cc two-stroke engine into this thing. If you are unfamiliar with this uh, project, these are actually amphibious from factory. Now, albeit they never came with any suspension whatsoever. So we're going to try to keep amphibious capabilities. So what that means is that if I come to a pond or a creek or a lake, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I'm going to be able to float across that thing and I won't have to worry about sinking it and ruining my engine essentially. There was a couple pieces of criteria I wanted to meet. Once again, we had to have a sealed tub. So that's why the front kind of looks a bit funky. And I wanted the flat bottom so that I could just skid over trees and stumps and whatever. Instead of taking all that mud and everything and getting caught in around the frame and weighing us down. We've, we're kind of making like the ultimate little buggy, I guess you would say. So this is our power plant for our amphibious buggy build. This is a 600cc Yamaha two-stroke snowmobile engine. It's out of a Yamaha VMAX um, in 1995 to be more specific. So as far as two-stroke platforms of that era goes, these are actually pretty bulletproof. I don't want to jinx myself on that, but I have seen these up with 30, 40,000 kilometers and still running pretty strong. Now, to jump ahead in the future a bit, if this thing does work out the way I want it to, it will be getting a full rebuild and a freshen up but not to jump too far ahead. So these motors actually produced around 19 and 95 horsepower, I believe. And that's gonna be just miles ahead of what came out of this. Um, I believe there's about an 18 horsepower, 16 horsepower to constant four stroke that uh, actually came out of these tear jets. So we're adding quite a bit more power. Um, there was a bunch of criteria that I wanted to meet on a power plant as well. Um, I had to be CVT clutch, just to match our CVT gearbox. Um, I wanted something that was light, something that had a bit more horsepower, albeit I wasn't really looking for 90 horsepower, um, but hey, it's better to have it and not need it than need it than, and not have it. And another thing I really wanted to hit was electric start. I thought that it would be really pretty lame that you have to jump out every time to pull this thing over. Now, with that being said, I will be leaving that on there for the secondary backup just because. So what we're going to work on first, guys, we're actually going to take this wide pipe off because we're going to have to do some drastic modification to it. Um, I think when the exhaust actually comes on, we're going to kind of do a little bit more of a 90 probably more routing on the exhaust. But first, we'll take that off. We're gonna work on getting the body off, the seat out, and then we can better kind of mock up where this needs to sit. So now you can kind of see the bare bones of this thing. As you can see, we have a couple of shock hoops. Um, we have a full coilover suspension out of a snowmobile with resis. I really like these shocks because it gives me infinite adjustability. Now, I want to touch on the steering and whatnot um, just a little bit. Um, I think what I'm going to do is actually get the engine in, um, fuel tank, seating position, essentially everything up and running. And then we're going to come back and revisit the front because I feel like I'm just kind of working against myself with no weight. This thing is very light up front right now. Now we do have a big bump steer issue, but like I said, I think the best time to fix that and figure that out is when we have a full weighted suspension and we can better judge um, essentially where this thing wants to sit. Because I feel like if we do a lot of modification of that right now, um, we're just kind of working against ourselves. So we're going to revisit that in the future. There will be another episode where we dial that front end in completely. But for this episode, we are going to be installing our motor. So in a previous episode, you may have noticed that I cut this piece out. And this is essentially where our exhaust ran. Our factory motor sat around here somewhere, came over, and this is how the exhaust exited through a piece that was here. So that's why there is a piece cut out. Um, of course, that is a tub modification that I have to do in the future. But the reason it's still left open is because the same reason we actually came in here on an earlier video and made the keyway longer in this drive axle. So now that gives me the ability to take this gearbox, shove it over here. Now, if you've seen the other videos, you're gonna be like, man, you're preaching to the choir. We already know this, but if you're new here, just to get you up to speed. So I can now take this gearbox, shove it over there because this engine is a little bit different than most two stroke snowmobile engines. 
This one actually runs the external water pump. So this actually has a V-belt drive in here with a belt that runs this water pump and that's how coolant goes around your cooling system. It's actually a little bit wider of a block than most two-stroke snowmobile engines are. Usually on this side, you only have your uh, pull cord and this wouldn't be here. I kind of foreseen that and this is how we kind of modified just to be on the safe side. With all that being said, so as you can see, we have a little bit of rainwater here that uh, gathered. So I guess this much is water tight, but um, the weatherman said it wasn't going to rain when I left it outside. Um, the weather network said it wasn't going to rain and I woke up and it had rainwater into it. So um, must be one of those strange anomalies that never happened, I guess. But anyway, I digress. We're going to start by chopping this out. This is your factory. I think it's a factory thing. I don't, I don't know if this is actually your factory mount. This here has obviously been welded in after the fact. This here perhaps as well. But um, I think we'll chop this out. I'm going to make a nice little frame here for all this to sit in. cut this uh, factory motor mount off um, as you can see it's here in pieces <laughs> um, it was when they built the Tearjet that was definitely its final rent resting place they weren't planning to ever modify that again it was kind of a lot more cutting than what I wanted to do but we got it off um, as you can see I went ahead and put the secondary clutch on and that's going to allow me to better set my belt um, I want to say deflection but we're not really going to worry about that too much now um, Another thing that I will show you guys that I'm actually pretty happy about is that I was really nervous that it was going to get stuck here because there's a keyway that runs through the center and that's essentially how you drive your drive axle. But as you can see, it's pretty lively. So as you can see moving there. So that's, uh, that's going to allow me to shift this uh, gearbox back and forth pretty easily. So I'm pumped on that, that that didn't stick or rust in it anyway. Um, we have our 600 suspended right now. The reason I wanted to do this wasn't the fact that it was really heavy, which it is kind of heavy and awkward to handle, but now it's rigged up center. I can kind of pick that up, pull my um, tub back, set that in place, see where it kind of got to go, and it'll keep it adjusted so I can kind of make a template of my motor mounts or whatever I need to do there, essentially. Um, the one thing that I am going to go off of is actually this back motor mount. When this was in the machine, this was actually level. The machine it ran parallel to the chassis. Each engine, especially with snowmobile engines, they're usually clocked a certain way. Um, I'm going to try to leave it at that angle. So we're going to put this in pretty good there now, the way the orientation it is. Pick this up, move the top back, and we'll see where we can get a position. check it out so I think this is where our engine is going to live it's a little bit crooked there now but this is pretty much its home now I went ahead and I just got a piece of 316 plate and I tacked it down below here just blew out a couple holes and what that done that just allows me to kind of size things up a little bit better when it was hung on the rigging there just in the center it was pretty lively so at least this solidified it a bit so I can kind of just move it around just a touch and kind of take a few measurements and see if there's anything going to be in my way. Quite a bit more width there on the aluminum case. So these, uh, these VMAX 600s and 500s that run a system like that, they're kind of wider than most other snowmobiles. So I am glad that I actually went ahead and cut this out and we actually milled out the keyway a little bit further as you see in previous videos. So that worked out in my favor. I may have to come in here and get a little bit of shorter belt because as you can see, this is really tight here now. Um, another thing as well, our secondary. On a snowmobile, your secondary usually, usually is a, kind of a 180, where this nose piece or this helix and spring um, will be on this side. So as you can see, I'm probably going to, have to get creative with some piping here for my um, intake, where my carbs go. Um, another thing too, before someone comes at me with the clutching in the secondary, 
I know that helix and that secondary spring, once it shifts out, it is what it is, and it's gonna shift out very quick. If that's clutch for like a 16 horsepower or 18 horsepower four stroke engine, um, that's gonna shift out so fast with this 600 uh, two stroke. You're essentially throwing 90 horsepower at something that was designed for 18 horsepower. So, and once again, with that being said as well, two strokes make their power usually like 8,000, 8,500 RPM. So I think once that shifts out, which it will do very quickly in this orientation, you're kind of just going to probably do like 60 kilometers an hour and that's probably what it's going to be. Hopefully I can modify this to take the secondary off the snowmobile or maybe there's some type of clutch kit if I do some cross-referencing. Not really sure on that. That's definitely later down the road. We're not going to worry about that right now. What we are going to worry about is getting this thing up and running and moving. So I think this is where it is going to live. Um, I'm going to try to figure out some type of engine mounting type system here. I don't want to go too crazy with it because once again, I am going to have to modify my Y pipe that sits right here on the exhaust side of things. There's also a um, starting motor that sits in here as well. So we have to be cautious of that. I will be putting hydraulic disc brakes on this. I do have to modify this brake disc, of course, and then we do have to put a caliper bracket here at some point of its life. So we don't have to get too crazy with brackets coming off here, but we do need to make it strong. So I've been kind of looking at it, kind of taking a few measurements, kind of standing back and thinking what's the best way to go about this. Once I figure it out, um, you guys will know. Found some 316 scrap I had left around, so made this piece out of 316, braced it back that way and this way. Um, that's all 1.8 that we're going to weld out. The back, I'm kind of eh, iffy on. It's like I went through all that trouble to CNC cut that, and then now I'm just going to put a one inch chaser SS back here. So <laughs> I, I don't know. Tacked into place for now. I'm going to think on this one. I'm not really super happy about it. But I don't really know how far we really need to go with it, to be quite honest with you. But I wanted to make sure that this brace was over this way far enough that we could get our disc off when we need to, whenever we would need to. I'm hoping there's going to be enough room here for our shift mechanism for our gearbox. Um, once again, we have to come in here and put a hydraulic master cylinder. As for sturdiness, I think once it's welded out and bolted down solid, I think we should be good. This gearbox can actually be clocked a little bit this way. I have a little bit of a clearance issue down here that I can make probably another half inch back this way. Now, I may need to get a shorter belt, but that's yet to be determined. So what I think I may do now, pull that motor back out, um, weld all that out solid, lay it back in place, and that's kind of going to be its home, and then we can kind of work around that. Now, what we're actually going to do now, guys, is I'm actually going to set you guys up on the stand and we're going to put the body on this thing and probably put the seat in there. And that's going to get me a little bit in the ballpark of where the exhaust got to go, my seating position got to go, um, what type of clearance issue I'm going to have on the fiberglass body. So, guys, like I previously stated, this body is probably, eh, it might be a little bit more than 20 pounds, it's probably 30 pounds, maybe 40 pounds, I'm not sure. But uh, it's pretty manageable for one guy. Now, with that being said, if you had a factory meat body, 
Um, you probably wouldn't be doing this by yourself, but if I crack this thing, then I don't really care. To be quite honest. Let's see. Let's see where the old girl's gonna sit. That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Let's throw this seating. I think the seats have been by. Alright guys, so it's actually the next morning and I took it probably about an hour last night and kind of sized up this exhaust a little bit differently. So let me get you in here. Now I still have the body on and the seat in place because this is going to kind of give me a ballpark on my clearances anyways. So this here is our factory 90. Um, original thought process I had was I was going to have to kind of make a really sharp 90 up, kind of come up and go over this way a bit. But obviously that wasn't going to work. I don't mind cutting this stuff out, but if I can keep, you know, the majority of it, I will. This has obviously got to be repaired anyway. So I'm not super partial to it, but the less repairs, the better. So what I actually done, I came in here with this, this um, Y pipe and I flipped it 180. So now, as you can see, the exhaust port kind of points down more so than out. Um, what I will do then, I will shape this and form this piece and that will give me a nice tight 90 over this way, like so. I'll take all that together or make it more than likely, but I'll shape it, form it and uh, make a nice weld on that. Then that will get me in the ballpark for this piece. And that piece will probably go something like this. Actually, no, that's a lot for me. That will probably go more so like set like this somehow, as you can see. Once again, that's gonna take a little bit of forming and shaping and fitting and messing around. Then I'm gonna to have to get creative. I think this is some five inch um, exhaust pipe I had from like an old, 12 valve Cummins I think I've done years ago and I may have to come in here and do a bunch of pie cuts just to get this a nice 90 to flow and then come back up here with this part of our muffler or our exhaust chamber or whatever you want to call it. The thing with a two stroke exhaust is that you usually have to have this chamber piece where it gets really skinny comes up into a chamber and then it usually necks down to probably like a one inch or one and a half inch pipe. Then on the newer machines, they actually go out to a big muffler. We actually call them suitcases, they're so big. And this one is kind of different to me. Now I'm not that I'm super up on uh, two stroke exhaust or the VMAX for that matter, but this one is actually a cone. So it comes back, oh, let's see if I can get a shot in there. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up guys. It actually goes into a cone shape back into here exhaust runs out, collects here, comes back on the outside of the cone, and this comes into your muffler and out. Now, I don't know if this is an actual muffler. It is of sorts, but these VMAX 600s are kind of whisper quiet from factory. So like, it kind of leads me to believe that this is muffling more so than this is muffling because this here is the size of a race can on a new snowmobile. So I don't know if this is straight through. Maybe it's really, really um, condensed inside. Maybe there's a lot of chambers inside here, baffles, etc., etc. I'm not sure. But what I'm going to actually do with this, I'm going to cut this off, cut this off here, cut that off, and that's going to give me the ability to kind of mount that in a way, and I can kind of better judge my exhaust port because I don't mind this thing being a little bit louder. I don't want it ear deafening loud. Um, when it comes to two-stroke exhaust, especially even when you put a can on. Um, the exhaust usually runs with the belly pan. The snow actually absorbs the sound waves coming out of the muffler. That's why if you ever hear a snowmobile going across open water or on pavement, it's super, super loud. But then when it gets in snow, it's kind of muffled down a little bit. So we don't have that option here. This is going to be kind of straight up and I'm either going out here or coming back and coming out probably one of these ports or something here on the hood. Um, so we will cut this off and I will straight pipe this section. Um, I could always make my own muffler or more so a resonator. But once again, I don't know what's inside here and that's kind of what's throwing me for a loop right now. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to just going to start tacking up a few things and seeing if I can get this in the ballpark that I want it. I would ideally like that to sit kind of straight 
something like this away from everything. And I think it will turn out really great because when I cut this off, it will sit in this kind of corner here. Well, it will end in that corner and there should be tons of clearances, but I just need to make sure I can get my 90 up there. And one other thing that I may as well show you guys is that the factory Y pipe that bolts to your chamber usually sits like this on a snowmobile. Now this is essentially a flex joint. All that this does is hold this together with two springs. It seals here on this ball and socket joint. And that allows flex because these engines vibrate a lot. And um, what will end up happening if you hard mount it, you'll actually end up having uh, stress cracks and wells will break and it's not really a good time. So I think what we're gonna to have to do with our situation, just because we're kind of space limited, we may end up just um, probably running some sort of rubber mounted exhaust hanger or multiple exhaust hangers so that we could have it rubber mounted so we won't run into that issue. So I decided to take it one step further and actually see what this thing was about. And it's exactly what I thought it was. It's essentially a straight through, unfortunately my camera can't pick it up. It's essentially just straight through and it's like a resonator that you would see on a race can. That leads me to believe that a lot of muffling is happening in here. A lot of muffling of sound, a lot of sound deadening is here in here. So I think it may work out in our favor because I don't want to chop this up. I don't want to mess with the tuning because each en engine is usually tuned from factory for that pipe. I think this is going to give me a couple options now if I want to run a tighter, smaller diameter pipe. Well, not a smaller diameter, but if I want to run it a certain way, I can run a straight piece of pipe and I don't have to put this back. And this kind of tells me that if I run a straight pipe from here out, it's not going to be very loud at all. I made sure that I left a bit of meat here just in case I was going to weld it all back together. Now I will clean that up now and kind of uh, make that a bit cleaner. But as you can see, I can kind of mount that kind of anywhere. If I wanted to come over here, put a 90 on it, if I wanted to kind of just go straight out that port there on the um, fiberglass body, or I could even just put it back like this and make a nice spot here for it to run out the side of the uh, tub. So there's a couple different options now that I have with this. I had to come in here and add some material in here. Just made a little couple pie cuts, came out really great. We'll say not the best welding, it doesn't look the prettiest, but it's miles ahead of what it was. I actually had to come in here and cut about three to four inches out of the chamber pipe, which I really didn't want to do, but in order for me to get this piece underneath the hood of the Tearjet, I kind of had to make it really tight and make all this really tight. So hopefully we didn't lose too much horsepower. Um, I'm not really chasing horsepower numbers, but I just don't want to cause a lean condition or anything within this engine. And you know, every time we run it, it'll lean out or something like that. So as you can see, we actually came in here, made this quite a bit bigger, came around, and it's going to be quite a bit more free flowing until it gets to this cone that's inside here. I positioned this piece on the top which I will touch on later. I never kind of cut it down or anything because uh, this will give me a little bit more meat to weld to. So guys, this is essentially the finished product. Um, as you can see, I have a little bit of a clearance issue here, but I think what ends up happening was that when I welded it all out solid, um, it kind of shifted or twisted a bit, which I kind of figured was going to happen anyways. But as you can see now, this is a really nice 90, although it is a bit tight, it will come up and then go out there. And it kind of sits pretty flush with this back piece here. So I got tons of room for my seat. Now I will come in here eventually and make like a bulkhead that will kind of be a heat 
sink type thing you know maybe i'll put some foam on it or just an aluminum piece to keep the heat out of here but if it's not going to cause me any issue i mean it doesn't hurt to have air coming in through this way and you know sucking the air out that way the hot heat that's going to be trapped down inside the tub so i think that's pretty cool i do have a little bit of uh issues right here now because I kind of figured it was going to happen anyways. Once I put all this heat into these welds and put in more material, I figured it was going to twist a little bit, but it's nothing that a little bit of grinding and a little bit of uh, messing around won't be able to fix. For the most part, it's great. Now, the one thing that we will be keeping an eye on, unfortunately, is my starter is going to be behind here. Is this going to overheat a starter? Something that's going to have to be determined in the future. The reason I kind of wanted in this orientation, albeit I kind of had it over this way a little bit further, I think the welds just kind of drew everything pretty crazily, was now I could take a factory loud noises! hood or trunk lid or whatever you want to call it. And I think it'd be really cool if I can, you can see the exhaust port in there, come up and essentially have my exhaust come out through here. Maybe I can make a really nice surround or a flange have the exhaust right here, and then I could probably have my intake here. I think that would be really cool looking if we could even do something like that. I think that would be really clean. But I think we got a lot accomplished in this video, guys. I think that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. I think uh, we nailed it out of the park. Still gotta figure out that rear engine mount. I don't like that. It'll work and it's probably fine for the application, but I've gone that far on trying to keep everything as tidy as I can or in the future it'll be as tidy as we can get it. But uh, it just kind of annoys me that I just got this one inch tube there kind of supporting the back of the engine. So I'm going to come up with something different than that I feel. Other than that guys, thanks for tuning in. If you got this far in the video once again, um, send me a like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Um, we're getting pretty close to testing this thing out now. So um, definitely hit that bell notification. So uh, every time I upload a video or a short, you guys will be the first to know. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.